hello guys welcome back to my channel this is a different setup we're in a different place we're at the backyard lagos yes. it's a very nice restaurant we just finished eating like my belly is and this is bimbo how y'all doing I've been bimbo and craig and i'm sure a lot of you know her from skinny girl in transit tiwa <laughs> so we decided to meet up and just talk about a few things i was even asking on snapchat like what do you people want to know about her when you're not about me we had a topic in mind but instead it's going to be q a in fact we want to know about her we we're just in and she was saying some pretty interesting things and i thought it was the kind of thing she should share hey i want to put it in trouble yes because you see <laughs> i spent too much time in my oh. head okay and imagine if the world was in my head <laughs> it would be a scary place <laughs> it's a very scary place because sometimes my convictions can be very solid but that's what i like about her she's someone that is very self-aware and i think that's one of the things that a lot of girls these days they are not very self-aware and i feel like before you do major make major decisions in your life you need to be very self-aware even for the kind of course you study in school, yeah. the kind of career you have, the kind of husband you marry, the kind of guys you date, the kind of guys you date, because it looks like when people are getting married, they don't think it's the lady's choice. They always feel like it's the, the guy, guy that decides he wants to marry you. So you have to it. also choose like, is this the kind of guy I want in my future? Like, it's still about you too. It's still your decision to make. So, yep. She was. She's very, very self-aware, and I thought we should talk about it. Wait, like this self-awareness did not come in a day. So how did how did how did you and know you were self-aware? I wouldn't. Why use all this big grammar? Big grammar. I would not say I'm. How do you know you're self? There's one thing or one quote that I've held very dearly, which is, "You know, things be true to thyself." Okay. So what I do is this. I've tried. I try as much as possible to be very honest with myself. Yeah. I have con conversations with myself. If I have an argument with somebody, before I relate it to another person, first of all, I replay the entire <laughs> argument, and I'm, I'm literally serious. I replay the entire I'm argument and the conversation to myself, and I'm like, okay. So this is where this was coming from, Bimbo. If you were in the person's shoes, so yeah, switch roles. And once I do, if you are being honest with yourself, you realize that okay, maybe the person did have certain valid points. Yeah. Which now makes it easier for you to understand where they were coming from. And also understand where you were coming from as well. Yeah. So you're like, okay, you get. Now you're not deciding if the person is worth it. You're calling to make Amen. things better. Yeah. Or you just let it go. Or every once in a while you need that third party to be your sound of reasoning. Ah, the thing I'm saying. <laughs> My biggest wakening Awakening call before I can speak yes. English. I don't know. Awakening because <laughs> when I realized I needed to lose weight, oh, yes, fat is a very funny thing, and I don't I say that because I don't like the word. I tell people that it's a very rude term, okay. There are other ways in which you can describe people, yeah. I'm, I'm not necessarily in agreement with all of them, curvy. but the dictionary has we are curvy. even though I don't know the difference. <laughs> the difference with curvy, thick, I like thick. voluptuous, oh, I like chubby. Chummy is like cute, like you see that. Oh. Thing, but all of us were still about it. All of them together, all over it. But um, it was when I realized that I needed to do something about my weight. And the reason why I say I realized that was because it took me having brain surgery and almost dying. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it took me having brain surgery. When I almost dying, not from the surgery. After the surgery, I was ill for like ten days. Ooh. I lost like God knows how many kg in those few days. And only first realized that now malaria. So what had happened was after my surgery, you know, I came from Nigeria, okay. from Nigeria and I did yeah. my surgery in America. So when you have surgery, your immune system drops. Just, uh, so therefore, if there's any form of parasites whatsoever, yeah. it just gives room for the thing to take advantage. Wow. So now malaria, right? Did they beg me to chop half a slice of bread? I've never seen difficulty like that in my life. But during that whole time, I was also on oxycodone, and it's like a really strong painkiller, and it has a lot of side effects. I'm one of it was depression. So at night, my sister and my mom will be sleeping and I'll be looking at myself and I'll be depressed. Like I'll be thinking of the craziest things. And it was during that time that I looked at my body and I was like, not body, body shaming anybody here. This is like this is me talking about myself. So, so it was when I realized that, Bimbo, you're fat. And I wasn't, I wasn't sad about it. It was just a huge reality trial. Because I was one of those children where growing up, my mom didn't like the fact that I was overweight. And she used to tell me, but I never used to answer because my daddy, they so care. 
He didn't care, but my dad was not comfortable with that. My dad gave me confidence. Now, like you said, there's nothing a man can tell me now that would waver me because my dad wow. has either said it to me. Yeah, my dad is late now, but he said it to me, so it's a resounding. If you tell me I'm beautiful, I don't know how to speak compliments. That's because my daddy told me one time, hey, find I think girl. that's major. Who find help was the second thing my daddy said. <laughs> so, Who therefore, find don't help. get carried away by your beauty. beauty. It's not everything. No. So it was realizing the fact that people are big and you either do something about it or you don't. But the fact that I was able to be honest, that it hit me, I cried. So the fact that I was able to be that honest with myself made me realize that there are lots of things that you can do better at. I can do better with my temper. I can do better with my OCD nature. I can do better with <laughs> you and me trying to filter you know, better with certain people. Mm. But then with certain people that I call family and I hold dearly, I speak for what I want to speak because they know where it's coming from. Mm. Yeah. But you need to be able to know who you are to the core. So that that way if you're walking out or you're hanging around people and they have certain remarks about who they think you are. Yeah. You can defend who you know you are. Yes. All that talk that they say somebody will tell you who you are. No. It's, it's, excuse my French is bullshit. And I think also if you know who you are, it will help with the way you allow people to treat you. Very important. If for instance you're a queen, you're not going to let people push you very, around. Very, very important. And no the energy you feel within comes out and when it comes out it attracts the right type kind of, of energy to you praise the lord yep somebody's preaching it's the truth <laughs> man it's the truth i had questions from my snapchat i don't know how i feel about this question and the question let me tell you the number one question because this oh, babe, really love because I know. this babe first of all was saying she's never been in a relationship hell you have put my life on blast no, but I think, it's, I think it is interesting because Jesus is because love. for some people they will feel like <laughs> they will die. Yeah, they really never see people already saying that then I mean there's something wrong with her. Like, everything <laughs> in me is functioning right. But wait, is it that all the guys you never like them? No, it isn't. Like I was telling you, it's sad because like I said, I have a lot of guy friends, but I can be very clueless. I don't know how to yeah, read so in between read the lines signal. because I'm a very direct person. I appreciate the same directness back, even though I realize that there's something called love languages and people speak mm. differently. So I've learned to. So I've also also learned to appreciate and balance out the kind of love languages I like, which is I like action and I like words. Mm. Not necessarily words of affirmation, but same. Yeah. So I want to be told, and when you tell me, I want you to back it up with actions. And no offense to my girls and boys, but right now people <laughs> just assume. <laughs> Most people are in relationships are like, ah, when did you guys start dating? They just fell into it. They fell into it. It no, just happened. I want to be told, hey, be we intentional. Be, we've been have to be very intentional. Because you see, when people are very intentional, guess what? It makes them what? Responsible and accountable. Exactly. So that, that way, when they mess up, you can throw me back in their face. And I you brought that, you told me. You saw me, me sitting down by myself. You <laughs> walked up to me and you said this to me. And you told me what you wanted. Yeah. So if I furnish or tell me I furnish her, then I'll say, okay, yes, I have. But then, don't make it seem like I'm crazy and going on. Or like when I'm in a relationship by myself. You need to be intentional because you see, when people assume things, as my mommy taught me this thing, when you assume, it makes an ass of you and me. A S S U M E. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, mama, smart. Thank you, mommy. <laughs> I know I have a lot of people that are kind of like this age range, like. 24 to maybe 40 or mm -hmm. people that are kind of like our age mates and maybe some are single some are married maybe some have 10 kids but for the people that are like let's say 30 and single because that's a question i got a lot of in my snapchat i was like i didn't even know she was 30 you guys calm yeah. down like they were like I she's 30 and single how are you coping and i'm like mm -hmm. i should ask her how am i coping yeah in recent times when i say recent times this year it's not been easy let me tell you why, because as much as I can feel like I'm a self-aware girl and I'm strong and I'm all that, women were created to be loved. <laughs> so, as much as everybody wants to do macho Jackie Shan, independent women, deep down inside, we want to be loved. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. No. It's a good thing when you realize that. And so oh, it. We're not meant to be alone. So as much as we're strong, and then when you reach certain levels in life where you feel like you're okay the next yeah. thing you start thinking about is relationship yes. marriage children so when you turn 30 when i turned 30 that was one thing i'm like okay work is going okay be thank god money could be better but we're not complaining health wise we're taking control of that so we're doing okay spiritually we're getting there you understand me? yeah i think with spirituality you never attend it yeah you're always so a strong one you're always trying to get the journey so spiritually i'm trying to get there so what else do i feel like is missing in my life 
and it's been in a relationship. So therefore, I'm trying to be more approachable. I'm trying to be friendlier. I'm trying to go out every now and then. Shout out to Olumide who me on my first blind date. <laughs> I, <laughs> don't know, I don't have to do a vlog about her dates from now on. If you would like to see <laughs> those kind of videos, please let her know in the comment that section. That was interesting. <laughs> so that reality also just hit me with the fact that, especially when you have people around you yeah. who are married, or not even necessarily mm. married, in happy relationships. relationships. And then you can see that it does them well. You understand me? So understand me, I'm not necessarily trying to say get married. I'm just trying to say being with someone who brings out the best in you. Because it's yeah, with someone who brings out the best in you, it oozes out on the people around you as well. So as I'm growing older, my friends are happy. Those relationships are happy. Those marriages are happy. Yeah. So you're like, you know what? I want that. And that's where I'm at right now. It's not easy because every once in a while, as much as you try to occupy yourself with work and with activities yeah. like going to the gym and hanging out with friends, you get home and who are you calling in the middle of the night? Who calling you? Who are you calling to say my day has been stressful? Or who are you calling to stress out? <laughs> so as I'm getting older and it's getting harder, but learn to take advantage of the time you have being single as well, which is what I've tried to do, which is where it comes with self-awareness. Take advantage of that time, stand <laughs> who I am. Yeah, being able to know my flaws, my strength, and my weaknesses, and trying to make my weaknesses my strength. Trying to work on certain things that people complain about that before I used to take for granted. But now I'm realizing that if one or two people complain about something in you, then there's really something mm -hmm. wrong. Something. So a smart person will sit down and try to see how to get better at That's it. it. So take your single time to just try and reflect, try to get to know yourself better, get to know God better, try to treat people yeah. better. Because you realize that when you have all those things around you that are working better, then it gives room for good things to come your way. But it's hard. But I, I, I believe also in that, what's it called? Is it power of attraction, of attracting good things? Because when you get to that stage where you're like, okay, you know some people, you were saying, there are some people that are like, do you know what? I don't need to be in a relationship. I don't need a man. I'm happy as I am, blah, blah, blah. But when you're true to yourself, if you think deep down, like, just you and you, you don't have to admit it to us, like, just you and you. If you feel, okay, I need to be in a loving relationship and you can admit it to yourself, then you will begin to attract make changes, it, you make to, changes attract. to make it happen. Yeah. And you have to be aware of what you want to, so you need to tell yourself the truth and then start finding a way to attract exactly what, what you want. I'm not sure of the other purpose in which I put up on this side for, but one thing I know is to be a mother. And so for oh. me, that conviction is so strong in me. Which is why when people are worried about, oh yeah, you're not married, I'm like, it's gonna happen. It will Because I know that I am meant to be a mother. And I also believe in levels and stages of things. So yeah. for me to be a mother, it means I need to be married. For yeah. me to be married, it means I need to date. So I know that you will come. It will come. It's just, it, it will happen. happen. You like to like, hurry up. Like, <laughs> it, it just takes time. Okay. But it will happen. We have more questions. And apart from the 30 and single thing, everybody wanted to know, you know what I'm about to ask. Yeah, I know. Tiwa and Mide, when is it happening? Are we going to see Tiwa and Mide in 2018? Are we going to wear a shirt? Wait, wait, are you guys talking about skinny girl? Yeah, we're talking about... Oh. No, we're talking about, first of all, skinny girl. I'm translating it to real life. <laughs> first of all, is, is Mide single? Like in Yo, real life? We need to ask him. We should ask him. Like, call him Vada. What if we thought if there was a Tiwa Mide in real life? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, season four starts airing middle of September. So, y'all need to watch this to find out that this season is really, really, really exciting. Really, really exciting. It's emotional. Well, give, us, give, us, give us, give us, give us, give us spoilers. One spoiler. Maybe the color of their shirt. <laughs> Someone leaves. Leaves with SJT. Okay, better be that girl in the office. That random girl in the office. Who's that? The annoying one. What's her name? Hadiza. <laughs> Someone leaves. We have a new character, a major character who shows up. And those are the two spoilers. Do you know what? Let me take a guess who leaves. Oh, yeah. Um, Bisala leaves. Be what you know. <laughs> who else will leave that it will be so major? I know you, you can major. leave. Mide cannot. Wait, Mide can actually leave. Exactly. We're married. <laughs> Do you know what you guys? No, what? <laughs> I can't wait to watch it. Like, and um, real life, real life. No, Ayola <laughs> is Ayola. Like, 
Oh, well, that's true. So we're not. I think we're not dating. We're not together. We're good friends. I think it's easy when you watch a movie or a series that you, you can feel the energy and you want What's it to be in real life. Like, it's attracting people are talking about that. We can see the chemistry in the time that Miles and Simi had. I don't know what they did with it. They threw it away. That chemistry was never there. It was never there. I never <laughs> saw it. They're like, um, what inspires you? What inspires me? A lot yeah. of things inspire me, to be honest with you. Okay. Life inspires me. Okay. Death inspires me. Sorry, I had to say that because when my dad died, and reason I said that because that's to me that's the closest person that's ever passed. Death affects people in different ways. Yeah. Death for me was an eye opener and a life shaker. It made me realize that first of all, life is fickle. The mind yeah. is fickle. You need to appreciate things better, but you also need to live in the now. And when I mean live in the now, take advantage of things around you. Yeah. It took my dad dying for me to realize that. I need to get better at my health. It took my dad dying for me to realize that sometimes family is family, but friends can actually be closer than family. Sure. It took my dad dying for me to realize that the fact that someone is older than you doesn't necessarily mean they're wiser. That's a big one for Nigerians because yes, <laughs> anybody older is automatically no. wiser. <laughs> so you see what I'm trying to say? So life, death for me shaped a lot of things and put things into perspective for me. Okay. So yes. That's really that inspires me because I'm not happy about it, but it's the fact that the realization that it is inevitable. That's it like will happen. It will happen. I would just that my dad so died. Scary. One thing he said that constantly, which is why I say death inspires me. He kept on saying, "Baby, when I go, what will people think about me?" And I just realized that we want to when we, when we die, it's not that we're gonna die. It's what we leave behind that matters. that matters. What kind of legacy? What kind of story? What will people say about you? It's very very important which is now where even when i pray i tell god that as much as i want to be great father god i want to also make a difference Different. no matter how little how little it is in our own small place there it can be this woman that constantly provides me bills and dairy but every day i give her extra money yeah that she keeps adding up adding up one day she open a factory yeah that's do you true. understand me so in our own little way so death inspires me my family inspires me my brother my sister and my mother oh shout out to I know she me that one is strong. <laughs> Jesus. I remember I met her and her mom. Was it Asheratin? Asheratin. When we went like a couple of months ago, and I was like, oh, they went on a mommy daughter date. She my G. She my G. Hey. They're like your career changed to acting and working with um, Danny. Um. What were you doing for? Working in a law firm. That's true. She That's where I went law. Um. Hey, <laughs> you, see, you, see, you see what I'm talking about when things happen that make you want to appreciate life better and just take yeah. advantage of things, especially within planets. I found out I had a brain tumor in 2013. Around that time, I had seen that they were hiring at Indani. Yeah. So even though I knew that I was traveling for my surgery, I was like, you know what, let me just go and see. Because by then I'd left my law firm. And I left my law firm not because I wasn't happy doing law. I just didn't feel the same as my colleagues did. Oh, you know when you yeah. come into work and you have people around you who are more enthusiastic about what so you're excited are. to come to work. In, if you are that kind of person, <laughs> you need to take a step back and evaluate things. Yeah. So you know we have quoting sections and section mm. this, 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 without even opening <laughs> book. Now I, get, I was getting the work done but I just didn't feel as excited about it. it. And I'm like, see I'm 26. I don't want to be 30 or 35 married with kids and have responsibility and still be doing something that I'm not excited yeah. about And in Nigeria, you know every time you tell people that you're not happy with your job, you want to do this I don't want to be able to yeah. have something Until you have back up Sometimes it's good, but sometimes you realize that I don't want to run mad So I literally just took a leap of faith and I just quit So by the time I left and I was working at my mom's law firm and So your mom is a lawyer? Yeah, you know? my mom's a lawyer, 36 years and counting wow. I'm a fourth generational lawyer <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah So I was I heard they were hiring anyways and I yeah. went in and um, during the meeting I broke down and when I broke down, the reason why I broke down was because Jade was interviewing me and she asked me, so what do you want to do? And I felt like for the first time someone was asking me, yeah, what do you really I felt like someone was looking at me. Because you know, like I said, I'm a generational lawyer. When I was growing up, I loved my mom so much. I want to be like my mommy, I want to be like my mommy. You know, that's how those things you say really yeah. identify who you are. So you do it and it wasn't like I wasn't happy, but I just didn't feel like I was in my purpose. Yeah. So for someone to not ask me, what do you want to do? I feel like 
she was listening to me. So I was like, I want to do anything. I'm willing to try something yeah. new because law is all I have known. Yeah. So she said, okay, you know what? We would. I went in for social media. She said, okay, we'll hire you as a production and associate producer, and we'll take it from there. I said, okay, but I'm <laughs> traveling to the over for surgery. Please, will this job still be waiting for me? She said, yes, go and come back. And I went and I came back, started working on the juice as an associate producer. A few months after that, producer. A few months after that, it's okay now, maybe a year and a half after that. Promotion. Hat trays. Like she's in so many worlds now. It's an oyster. So I, I believe I didn't plan it. I never yeah. thought I was going to be an actress. But I feel like God ordains our footsteps. And when yeah. He does, you don't question Him. I felt like it was going to be very foolhardy of me if I did not take advantage yes. of it. So yes. when they said, oh, come and act I'm like, I've never acted before. Who gave me a try? You but she's just never so know. good at it. Oh, bless. I don't think I am them. <laughs> Shout out to Mercy Johnson. That's my inspiration. <laughs> Mercy Johnson. I oh, that's that awesome. I love she's very versatile. Ah! <laughs> she can be posh. Ah! She can be ras. Anyone you want you know, her to be. Because someone owns a character, there's nothing you throw at her that she does not deliver to the team. She's good. And that's what it takes. No, I envy her. I'm, I'm, she's amazing. No questions. There's so many actually. Men but a lot of them are about men. They're, yeah, like, let's go. they're like men talk. We men want her to talk men. about men. I love her perspective on relationships. Hmm. I'm like, hmm. What can I say? We have been hearing your perspective mm. on relationships. Yeah. Like, what can you say about men? Give one advice. What can I say about men? I think men should be appreciated. Men should be loved. Yeah, I believe, like I said before, women are put on the set to also be loved, but we're also put on the set to be very submissive. So as much as I can be a strong woman and an independent woman, I believe a man should be in charge and a man is the head. So I let a man be a man. Don't confuse things. Don't ever try to take a man's role. So based on everybody that, everybody has their roles. Everybody has their roles, and once we can learn our roles and stay in our lanes, relationships are very smooth and easy. Oh, that's so, yeah. awesome. Yeah, man. Awesome. I love men. I just think Lagos boys sometimes can be silly. And that's not their yeah. fault. There's too many options. Too many beautiful Lagos girls. Too are so many beautiful. options. Yes. Too many options available. Mm. Mm. Let's see. Okay. Mm. How to deal with singleness? Did we talk about being it? a young girl? Being a young girl and everyone is having B and you feel left out. Like I said, you just deal with it. You yeah. find other things to be to fill your time with and learn to be happy for people that are happy. Yeah. Very, very important. Genuinely happy. Genuinely happy. Your friends and relationships, like she said, everybody's having a B and you're not. Be happy for the people that have B. Because guess what? Your B gonna come. <laughs> Might not be now, but he gonna come. Yeah. And if he comes then, and then there's nobody to say, oh my God, ah, people were so happy for you. Remember when you didn't have? Yeah. You refused somehow. Because then you're not be saying, I have B. Yeah. I have B. And they'll be like, so? When I have B, you yeah. weren't there yeah. for me. <laughs> So just learn to be happy with people that are genuinely in love and happy. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, see so this one. I think this is going to be her last question. Mothers who stay with abusive husbands because that's how they were raised and because of the church and society is against the boss. This is a deep one. It's deep. Let me tell you why. Because I'm 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 like a two-sided coin on this one. And let's start with the entire divorce thing first of all. Yeah. First of all, I believe in one thing and one thing only. I believe that nobody can make you feel tiny except you let them. Yeah. First of all. So let's even start with the abuse. Now there are different forms of abuse. There's physical, there's emotional. Yeah. It's all still abuse. There are signs that you can tell before you enter it. Now when you now enter it, you realize that it's a decision that you have chosen to make. Therefore, the only person that can either make a change about it is you. It's not on anybody. So therefore, my opinion really doesn't count. You are the one suffering it. That's true. You now decide if you can stay in it or not. It's not for me to tell you. Oh, get out break of up or get a divorce. You know, because they'll tell someone now. They'll go and discuss with the person you said. You know, the same person that's advising you to break up. <laughs> he says I decide to break up as soon, but I've not break up yet. <laughs> that's People need to understand that, that God does not give us more than we can handle. Yeah. So if you're in that situation that you put yourself in, own up to it. If you can tolerate it. But I believe that no man should ever beat a woman. Yeah. And no woman should stay for abuse or to feel small. But like I said, it is your choice. Yeah. And when it comes to divorce, I don't believe in divorce. I really don't. The reason why I say this is because in our country and our generation right now, everything is a divorce. Yeah. He spoke to me somehow I want to divorce. If there's nothing that any 
body in a relationship when a marriage is going through that's our parents and our parents before before do you not go through well ask them how they how survived they, it but how do you think they survived because a lot of the mothers of those days they were in really abusive situations and most of them like they always say they stay for their children so no 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 that's that's story exactly now because guess what a child will still grow up and there they, are people that were never raised by parents and mm -hmm. i know some people that were not raised by their parents and they're the most amazing people ever yeah ever so first of all all that one is stupid but that's why a lot of the like i said you're in an abusive i believe in your abusive relationship leave if a man is beating you up to the point where you know it's going to kill you leave yeah. Because if a man beats you up the first time, it means that you feel little because you start to question yourself. And the minute you start to doubt who you are, you don't exist. That's important. So, let's forget about all that story story. That is abuse. Get out of it. But we're talking about where you're in a marriage and you want a divorce based on irreconcilable differences. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying take it to I'm not saying take it at all. Yeah. I'm not saying take it at all. But like I said, it's not something that should be taken lightly either. It's yeah. not the first sign of hurt, pain, sadness that you want to divorce. It shouldn't be. There's yeah. always a way around things. I want to always tell people about this is when you talk about a man, first of all, and the reason I'm addressing this in relation to cheating. You know how every thing that generation yeah. is my husband cheated on me. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. First of all, there's no guarantee that the next man you're gonna be with is not going to do the same. Not necessarily saying stay in it. But if you are aware, a woman is very listen to your intuitions. They're very intuitive. If you feel and you know, have a conversation. Communication is what kills people. Okay. Imagine when you know that your husband or your boyfriend is stepping on you. You know because you can't feel it. You have seen things as well. You don't say anything about it. Who is dying to you? But you're just there. But imagine if you decide to speak up. The minute you speak up, it means that like he's aware. One thing men don't like is their pride. They don't like being made stupid. So in his mind, he was being smart. But now you know. The minute you know, he feels slightly bruised. He might act strong, but he feels bruised. Now, what now determines it's your approach? Mm. You're not going to get me the manner. You this idiot. You have dealt this to me. I know. No, no, no. The Bible says that a wise woman uses her heart to build her home. A stupid one uses her heart to scatter it. Scatter it. There's a way which you approach a man when you know that he's doing you wrong. Like I said, this is not abuse. It's like you're going to start another out. channel just for abuse. Get out of relationships. But <laughs> when it comes to all this cheating yeah. and being dodgy and stuff, there's a way in which you handle a man. Yeah. Men are like babies. I believe they that. They say that all the time. No, I do. I have babies. friends and guys. They yeah, are. Babies. They are. They like to be loved. They like to be told everything is okay. They like to be told they're looking good. They like to be told they are right. They like to be told they are smart. That's a child now. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If I go out looking silly and I know I'm looking silly, nobody can tell me that nobody look fine. Forget you. I look horrible. <laughs> but a guy, once you, they like their egos being yeah. massaged. So as a woman that you found out that your man or your husband is stepping out on you, especially if you're married, if you are still single, if you want to cheat, always a cheat. I don't believe in that. People can change, but if you are still single, you can't do it to go. But if you are married, meaning that you have taken a vow before God and man, yeah. it is your utmost responsibility to see it to the point in which you can, your capacity can take. Then you now decide, okay, you are done. Mm. But at least you know that you fulfilled all righteousness. So you are approaching in a manner that you know that's not going to be insulting. You are not attacking him. Yeah. They want to have a conversation with him. Eventually, you sit down. I've noticed this. I've noticed this. Yes or no? If he says no, he says yes. Either way, first of all, let him know how you feel. In not a condescending manner, because at the end of the day, he's still a man. It's sad, but that's what I'm saying. stronger than you. So you let him know how you feel about it. And if he's a smart man, he will now share his own thoughts. Either he did or he didn't, or hide it. But the point is this, he's away. And once he's away, it starts to affect how he reacts. So if he was before, he used to do things that he used to be sure about before. Yeah. Maybe he used to sleep over and he didn't care. He'll be more conscious now. That doesn't make it right. But okay. the point I'm trying to make is, like it's all things, time heals all things. Every man has a conscience. If a man is stepping out on you constantly, you keep keeping quiet. As far as he's concerned, he's getting away with it, so he doesn't know. And you yourself that you're listening because he knows you know. Because most times some of them just want to trigger and push the button. You're not saying anything about it, it's going to continue. But the minute you bring it to his awareness that we're not married, we have children. What you're doing is not right. Please try and you now decide how you want to take the conversation to. He's away. Eventually, you start to hurt him. Especially when you kill him with kindness. If he's not a good wife before, guess what? Be the best wife ever. Baby boy, how you doing? What <laughs> I'm a man. This takes a lot of emotional it does. strength. It does. But what I realized is this: we're never true with ourselves as women. 
Mm. Imagine if we had a group whereby we can be honest with ourselves and say that, see, society has made it to the point, and I blame society, has made it to the point whereby it's okay for a man to cheat. So if a man doesn't give a shit, he will cheat regardless of whatever you think it is. Mm. Now, I'm not saying accept it. Like I said, if you cannot get out. But if you feel within your soul that you know that this man loves you, because first of all, how would the guys that I knew that even step out on their beams or wives or whatever, they genuinely will never, read my lips, divorce their wife or anybody. And they don't joke with them. Then why do they cheat though? Because they've been told they can. It's a mental So we thing. have to stop that narrative. It's a, especially you especially women. Children. Especially it's a women. cycle. It's a cycle and it's hard now because me and you can't change it. And, and I think that's why I old boys to think that they can do it. It's, it's a cycle. So the minute when you're reading, if you have sons, learn to imbibe the right kind of things to the, into them. Yeah. You understand me? Show them how a man should treat a woman. What he should take, what he shouldn't take. It, it should be by example. By example. You know the way you said your, your dad told you so many good things that there's nobody that can come and bamboozle you right now. It's the way Those things stick with let, you. Let, let, Fathers, let your sons see how you treat your wife, their mother, and they will take after. It's and not, will treat it's not, oh, don't do this for you, you are doing something That's different. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm not trying to say accept it, but realize that the society has told them that they're men, and they can do it. That's no, why. It's told them that Half of the people I know that cheat on their wife, they're in love with their wives, forget. Their birthdays, they will buy them the moon and move heaven and earth. Even their side chicks will ask, but do you know, I will never leave my wife for you, because they genuinely love their wives. It's the fact that they've been given that perception that they can so they do it that's why they ask you why does men cheat they say it's the reason why the chicken crossed the road why because you know, can. we need to invite a guy one of these days if you guys are up yeah, for conversation for me inviting a guy to come and explain no not to your me we're not going to invite my husband because you people say he's biased but let's invite another guy another guy to come and discuss this men and cheating thing or maybe two guys or maybe three Ooh, guys chucky links <laughs> you're putting your blast right now. So if you're someone that values your home and you are you love your husband to the point where you're looking, you can look beyond because it takes a lot of stomach. Yeah. If you can look beyond that, because you know that whatever he did at that point in time was in the interim, it was just because it was in that situation. Yeah. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, he still has his core values. He loves his wife, he loves his children, he loves his home, he loves the foundation in which his marriage was set on. Yes, he did mess it up. So you want him, you have a conversation with him about it, and you guys might be able to move on from there. But our generation, we are too impatient. Not even about cheating, just no, generally. I've no, met people that are divorcing because you're not saying sorry. There's no time, please. You have to say sorry. You can't say sorry. We don't know what you mean. We can't be no. guessing. You need to understand that marriage, which is why I talk about when you're 30 that. and you're single, understand that it's not the end of the world because marriage is not the end. It's a means to an, an end. end. I keep telling people that a marriage is not necessarily about love. My understanding of marriage, foundation of marriage to me is not love. One thing I took from my parents' marriage was the fact that they respected each other. Each other. If you have no respect ah, for someone, you cannot love. That's kind of deeper than love, though. Yes, it is. And because we don't love, have, we just feel it. This is like, fickle. You just, can't feel. Oh, I touch it me. It can't feel. I feel. But the minute you respect someone, respect it means that you will go beyond and above. Love, in my opinion. It is. Because I will never, I respect you, so I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. If I don't want to hurt you, it means that you, I care, care about you. Yeah. If I care about you, I love you. Understand that. Marriage about respect. Then understanding. Then communication. Love goes without saying. Because if I marry you, she has been alive. But love is not what That's keeps something us safe in marriage. Now. It doesn't. And I don't really understand that. Everything Everybody is just about the feels. Feels, feels, feels how you feel. feel. It fades. My mom used to tell me something that hey, all these people are looking for sex, 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 sex. They say one day you go marry the sex. When, when she says sex, <laughs> my mom is like, when she means sex, she means like you want to constantly knock us back up. You understand me? They said there'll be one day you marry to the man next to you, and the day we touch you, I used to say, please, I don't want. Have it because you'll be running away from it. <laughs> so the point is, there's a season and there's a time for yes. everything. Love is a feeling that fades. Yeah. It fades in and out. Today you might be in love, tomorrow you're not in love. Some days you want to slap his head, some days you want to hug him. So but once you respect that person, regardless of whatever it is, you don't want to hurt the person, which is more important. Because that means that you value the person like you value yourself. And what you can do to yourself, you can do to the person. That's so awesome. God damn! You need to start your own blog channel. Yeah, I spent my time with myself, like I said you, before. You, you guys. <laughs> I'm only ginger I'm able to start their own channel. By myself. Tell her to start her own channel. And I'm so happy that I did this video with I you today. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> she's so sweet you like not. I, 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 I came late and i'm still sorry about that no, it's okay. i know i have a bad reputation for that it's already okay. but i'm so happy baby will came today i'm happy i was wondering and guys please remember it's all my opinion okay it's all her opinion all my with opinion. a few ones from me i it's, added yes, Shmo, Jara, Jara. Pepe, Corey, time. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed, click that subscribe button. Leave comments. Who do you want to see next on my channel? Maybe we'll have energy. I might become a new producer. You so I'm gonna make it happen. Mm -hmm. so let us know who you want to see. Who next. you want to see next? I'm gonna get the perfect <laughs> We're trying to take for now a blog worldwide. After that, <laughs> my own blog. Is. Yes, so let's, let's try I'll let you guys know when she starts. Let's, let's try and push her. We'll, to we'll come together on camera again. again. <laughs> yeah, she deserves it. I love the plan. Thank you so much, babes. Anyways, guys, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.